Yeah, what up, people? What's Happy good? Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. You know, we about to do it big. You know, Harlem, we about to represent. You know, welcome to the Beat 139. I'm Doc. I'm Don Vito. How y'all making it out there, you know? Keep the mask on tight. Keep them gloves in your back pocket, you know? We got our, our, our first guest tonight. She from Harlem. Erica Kane. Erica Harlem. Kane is in the building. 40th for the 39th. Rep, 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 rep. Harlem in the building. Yeah, yeah. Harlem in the building. Okay, get up on the mic, baby. Let them know. There we go. Harlem. I'm from Harlem. I'm from 143rd and Lenox Avenue. Um, I be on 40th. So, you know, 40th to 43rd. Harlem, baby, what's the word? Right, 139. You 139. Know 139. Uh -huh. So they, they can find you anytime they want to find you in the streets. I mean, on Instagram, you can find me, Erica Kane, Erica underscore Kane, underscore six nine. Or you can find me on Facebook, Erica Kane. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to start from the beginning. You know, you said you're from Harlem. How was growing up, the childhood? Rough. I mean, I fought every day. Like, literally. Really. Mm -hmm. What you was fighting for? What was going um, on? I guess I just grew up like in like to be an aggressive person. Mm -hmm. So I, when I would come with problems, that would just be my way of dealing with it. I would just always fight it out instead of just thinking it through, mm -hmm. like right, like I do now. Mm -hmm. So growing up, you, you get into a lot of fights. What was it school or just in the hood? No, I never fought in school. That was the thing. Like I always was business first, mm -hmm. and the turn up later. Like I fought outside on the weekends, but I was always good in school, good at work, but. You know, on the weekends, that's when I did my dirt. All right. So, you, what's your um, what's your knockout record? I think I'm like undefeated. <laughs> uh, honestly, I am. Yes. <laughs> she says she getting it in. You I'm know, undefeated. Like, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. They not mess with Erica. Huh? Nah, at all. At all. Or, or you come down the block and they walk on the other side of the street or something. Walk on the other side of the... No, because, <laughs> like, you, respect is given of bums, but once you cross that line, then I definitely got to... And not even to say bums because bums is people, but mm -hmm. you understand, like, anybody could get respect. But once you cross that line, then I just turn into another person. Like, that's mm -hmm. just it. But I always get respect first. Always. So you around the crew? Yeah. Lady Mafia... Um, 39th Street Girls, yes, like we was turning it up, like wow. literally, <laughs> literally. You're putting pressure on them, huh? Putting pressure, applying the pressure. Like I was the like the assassinator. Like I would be the one that be turning it up. Like mm -hmm. if it was a problem, I was definitely solving it for, you know, it for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The enforcer. The enforcer, basically. Mm -hmm. So did you ever like? After like some of the fights and stuff, you ever get locked up or something like that behind? You? Actually, uh, that's one thing I was able to manage to keep a clean record. Mm. Like, I mean, I did get like two tickets, mm. but it wasn't nothing too dramatic, so mm. I was able to like keep a clean record and like really get myself together. Oh, so you was a clever fighter. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I, I threw outside the block, unbox, fight when the police is not looking right, right, <laughs> instead right. of trying to do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, besides the fighting, there was any cheerleading, sports, anything you did? Well, I did um, hair for money. Like, I ain't really cheerlead, but I definitely braided hair from about, like, I worked. I had a job at, like, 16. I braided hair on the side. Like, that was my hustle. Like, braiding hair, and I worked at a clothing store called OMG. That that was, like, me right there. How old, how old you was when you start braiding hair? Um, I started very early, probably about... 13, I opened up, I want to say, I want to say I started nine, I started doing my own hair, like my mother would do my hair in three ponytails, and I would take them out, and put a bun, barrettes, a whole bunch of different things, but when I started like really braiding my hair and stuff, and like braiding hair for money, it was like 14, 15 years old. Oh wow, so, that's mm -hmm. good, because you was a young entrepreneur. Basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and braiding hair is forever. Braiding his yeah, mm -hmm. Especially right now with this COVID-19 situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just like, braided right? the other yeah. day. A lot right of women getting their hair braided and just chilling. Yeah. The house calls is crazy. That's yes, that's, that's braiding. And it's a little extra money. Tax free. I know the barbers was doing it. They charge extra. Yeah, I don't know. I need barbers. I'm talking about barbers. Much of a twist it up on there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm nicely laced. I got my pop smoke. Yeah. Rest in peace to pop smoke. That's the pop smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So question, so when did you start, like, Getting interested in music. I've always been interested in music. Like I remember Little Kim, like Foxy Brown, like even like 
Biggie Small was just rapping their music, but I just was always shy. Like, I could I knew that's what I wanted to do. Like, I used to be like singing a song, Mad Rome. I knew that was me, but I just was like too shy to do it. And then, um, I think what 2000, I, 2015, I finally just stepped out of my shell and I just started writing. And that was it. Honestly, like, I started writing because, like, Meek Mills is my favorite rapper. So it's like him and Nikki. Like, I just knew I wanted to be dream chasers. Like, mm. what is this? I was yeah. like writing to Meek Mill music at first. Mm. Mm. Also, you like Nikki over Lil' Kim? I definitely don't say I like her over Little Kim. Like, I like Little Kim too. The respect is there. But I um, grew up in her era. In her era yeah. Right. Yeah. So but she, you, I can relate to her more. But you got more like a Lil' Kim vibe, though. And everybody say that, yeah. but always remember that's where it started first. Yeah, Cause yeah, yeah. I I say that I love Little Kim and Foxy Brown, so I watched them first. Yeah. But then when Nicki Minaj came, it was just like she dominated the game, and I fell in love with her. Well, she dominated the game after they retired, though. Yeah, after they retired, yeah. definitely. Cause you see, Lil Kim, Lil Kim um opened the doors for them. You know what I'm saying? And Lil Kim had like Little Kim was a was sexy rapper, but at the same time. She had like an edge, like a, he was, she was edgy. You know what I'm saying? And, Definitely, um, like she colorful hair. She, yeah. you know, she did her the thing. attitude with it. The though. attitude. Nicki Minaj more like more like like sexy or princess type of, but you know, quality mm -hmm. type of rapper herself though. Yeah. Yeah. Lil Kim had that Brooklyn in her. You know, she she would get up. Uh, you know, yeah. she would do that. Foxy too though. Foxy is from Brooklyn as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you started rapping. Your first rhyme, how, how it came out to you? Um, it was like, wow, I could really do this. Honestly, like, I was, my little brother was rapping, and I was trying to be his sister jerk, and then he wasn't taking direction the correct way, so I'm like, hmm, let me see if I could just sit here and finesse this real quick. And once I started writing, I'm like, oh, I could write to that. Oh, I could write to that. Oh, I could, and then that's it. So in 2015, when you wrote your first song, you recorded your the first fun song you uh, recorded. I recorded it with my own like phone. My phone, I recorded it. Um, I definitely didn't have a studio to go to. Like I was just recording. I was I would work. I was working in a shelter at the time. A domestic. I mean, a single women shelter. And I would just sit in the office and listen to YouTube and just go ball for ball and write my raps. And I would just record myself and then I would just put it out there on Instagram just to see like the feedback and stuff that I was that I would get. And then finally, one of my little brother friends, she took me to a studio. She was like, I'm gonna take you to a studio. And then she took me there and I just been going ever since. So how many songs you got recorded right now? Um, I definitely want from, from from 2015 to now. Not no album, just songs you have recorded. Just songs that I have recorded, definitely probably more than 15. And I ain't bad. And, um, you know, I had to take a break because of personal issues. Uh, like, not really switch my job and stuff, so my lane of writing process was, like, disturbed, mm -hmm. so I had to find my way back. It was really hard, because I would write in the office every day, and then I started working in the post office, and then I couldn't write. That post office, you ain't writing no post office. You were, like, <laughs> six days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it was just, like, I couldn't write. Like, and when you first start, yeah. they won't give you the good hours. They don't give you, but you, you don't work get the good six hours. days. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Kill yeah, so yeah. It, it really it really messed me up because I feel like I was like really taking off and then I just got stuck and I just was like really sad because I didn't have no I had no movement like you understand life period so it was just like it was crazy for me but I didn't really I was like too shy to like write my pain and my music because you don't want to really tell everybody your business yeah. and things like that. But, I mean, that's how I came out with the, I'm not a regular person. But you know what? You could do it. And sometimes people think that, see, nowadays how rappers pump faking, mm -hmm. nobody wouldn't look at, oh, she really went through this. People just listen to it and it's like, oh, well, it's nice. That's true. But me, like, first of all, I can't, I, I'm, I'm not a liar. Like, I, I have to rap what I really been through in my life. Like, it, it's not, it's not made up for me. Like, I can't just be like, oh, like, if I'm in a call, I can't be like, oh, you at the bus and I'm at the bus too. Like, I gotta be, you understand? So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. for me, nothing was together for me. So I couldn't even fake it. Like, it have to be real. Like, it have to be real. It have to come from a real place. I'm not a story maker. Like, I'm telling my story. So or attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a story maker. I just can't be like, oh, I got 100 
Jimmy shoes in my closet. Like no, yeah. no. But people like, identify with you more when you when you yeah. keep it real about your show. Because mm-hmm. it ain't all about that glam. It's all about real quality rap and stuff that's relatable and believable. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of them rappers be having fake chains on and be using people mansions and be leasing cars and all that, you know? Yeah. That don't be there. Because ain't no way in the world you're going to tell me you just came out and you got all that. That's a, How you get all that, true. champ? Yeah. I mean, they, they should be heavy. Like, what? And mansions and everything. Already? All the cars. Damn, that easy? Like that. Like, you you know, know, know what I'm saying? Come on. No, nobody they make nobody it look like there. they make it look like Yeah, but if you know, but it's just like wrestling. Mm-hmm. If you watch wrestling, mm-hmm. you see the moves they make and they be doing stuff. That's called acting. You know what I'm saying? They did the fake hits, the slam, they tap the floor and all that. That's called acting. But if on the outside looking, if you don't know no better, it looked like they really putting that work in. You know? But to me, I think that's a disservice to, to the rappers. If I'm a rapper, I don't want to come out like that. Let me, because now you coming out like you're a man already, like, and you already um, coming out in the wrong. Place. And I think yeah. that's why sometimes it don't work for them yeah. because they, instead of just giving a role, like, I'm to, when I rap, I'm rapping about my life, things I've been through, things I'm still going through right now today. Like, you understand? Because it's like, I, I don't have a jet. Like, although I would like one, hopefully soon, but I don't have one right now. You understand? So it's just like, I'm not going to be rapping about that. And it, it just, to me, it just is it's no point. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everything I'm saying, I've been through everything, everything. Been around, like, I've been through it. I'm from Harlem, like... I'm a thorough girl. I was raised by a thorough man. So I've been through everything. I done seen it all. Drugs, guns, everything. I've been, I've seen it. I lived through it. So let me ask you a question. So, you know, coming up, when you said, uh, you know, you was um, hanging out with your girls and y'all was fighting, you had a crew, you had a clique and all that. Do you have any dreams of being something had, outside of before you thought about rapping? I had a lot of dreams. I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. I wanted to own a beauty salon and run like a bar upstairs, but I wanted my beauty salon to run um, all night mm-hmm. because that's one thing that never happened. Mm-hmm. Women can't get their hair done all day. And mm-hmm. Just what if you get an interview or anything at the last minute? Mm-hmm. Sometimes 7 o'clock is a little too early, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought about that. I definitely would like to get into real estate because... Um, first of all, just like seeing the houses and stuff like so abandoned, like I live in New Jersey right now mm-hmm. and just seeing the houses and stuff so abandoned, like I want to fix them up and sell them. So it's like so many things that I want to get into. I just started a new clothing line and everything. I mean, a clothing boutique on Instagram mm-hmm. because I just want to create revenue. Like that's it. Like I have two daughters. Like my whole goal is to just any, any type of way that I could get it. That's, that's just the way I braid hair, go to work, everything. I like you. Yeah, she got she got that young entre- entrepreneur spirit. Even when she first started talking, she said she was fourteen. She was braiding hair yeah, that, off that the rip, you know what I'm saying? She got to, and she's still giving it up like young entrepreneur. You know she just you got a, you, the other day, you got a good you got a good I, focus. I, on I, I have like I just braided hair the other day, like probably two days ago. Like money is money. Like that's just yeah. period. Like you understand? Like even if if I find a lane that way, I could just create extra revenue mm-hmm. and just. Pull back, I'm do, I'm gonna do it because I I just gotta get rich for my family, my daughters especially. Like mm-hmm. you know, so it's just like for me, it's just like any way possible. I'm trying to touch every field. Like I want to create um, low income housing because I'm a single mother, so I want the single mothers to not have to go through what I have to go through because mm-hmm. a lot of them don't have the same like drivers me. Like they don't get up and go to you know what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. it's just like for me, like I just want to touch everything. Mm-hmm. So far, you said you had 15 songs that you ever recorded, just from 2015 to now. Mm-hmm. So, are you working on an album, anything? Or I'm working on a right project um, with another female rapper named Anna Baby. And um, we're working with Violators and Verbal Wars. Did you ever hear about them? Yeah. So, we've been, we we doing like a, like basically like a, I guess, um, five song project and we're gonna put out some visuals soon and basically we just trying to get in any way that we can like mm-hmm. you understand because they didn't it's not really too i mean it, they have city girls but harlem and city and miami two different breeds like we mm-hmm. beast mm-hmm. period like you mm-hmm. understand like they they no disrespect because i twerk all day the city girls but we beast right. so it's like 
we just like we complement each other and like the songs that we created so far they just like they so nasty like not in a prerogative way but mm -hmm. like just our flows together Mm -hmm. just so y'all just y'all doing that project together, but y'all solo artists. Yeah, we both still solo artists, and we both know like it could be either one of us that make it. You understand? But mm -hmm. we, oh, but we, but it's just a sisterhood, sisterhood. and it's like it's no hate in it. If you make it, she she do her own stuff right now, and mm -hmm. I tune into her stuff, and she tune into mine. Mm -hmm. And if I need if, if I need advice, I could call her. Mm -hmm. When we in the studio, sometimes we go on verse for bar for bar. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So it's alright for y'all to um, y'all do something together, and she might do a solo project, mm -hmm. and she and y'all just support each other, just, and y'all get mm -hmm. down and make it work. Post so, each other, post each other in stories. So who you know a violator? You said violator. Violators. Mm -hmm. Who or who you know at, at that camp? So yo, I definitely um is Yo Mar. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working with Yo Mar. He's from Verbal Wars, mm -hmm. and Daryl is from Violators. Right. Okay. You know who Daryl right. is. I think I might. Yeah. I, I know a lot of violated dudes, but I gotta, I gotta see his face probably. Right? So they, that's your manager. Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that's the, her manager too. It's our manager for the project. Oh, so oh, so I got it. So, so basically, they so they, they just managing y'all for the project. Basically, but that's not your own. No, no, I don't have management as of now. I'm a free agent, so that's why you know I'm here by myself because I don't have no management. But for the project, they are managing me um, in her. So that's as far as it go. So far as management, what you would look for as a manager? Um, definitely, like, you know, people ask to be my managers, but they never just put the footwork in. Like, they, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to book a studio time, but I'm always going to come with my own money. Like, you understand? Like, I could pay for my sessions because I work every day to pay for my sessions. So it's just never like... When I when I when it's time for me to go to the studio, nobody did. So I go by myself. No, but I'm Basically. asking you. No, I'm asking you. What would I want? What a, what, in you, a manager? What, what you want in the manager? And what you think a manager role is? To definitely show up for me and to be there every step of the way. Like if I'm in a studio session, be in a studio session with me. Like let's figure out how we can get to the next level. So. Um, I just need somebody that's dedicated, that's driven, that understand that we both have priorities, but this is like a priority too, so we could both get to the next level, basically. Yeah, because I, I, I try to uh, tell people that the manager is really, like you said, to guide your career mm -hmm. and things like that. Some people get the misconception of managers like, like you said, you count your own money. Mm -hmm. Studio is your own thing. Basically. Managers don't have nothing to do it because managers really get paid. Remember we just explained that the other day. Mm -hmm. yeah. The managers actually get paid, but they supposed to like give you get you interviews, get you shows, get you they just putting you in that door. Basically. So they ain't getting paid now, mm -hmm. but they supposed to get paid down the road. Yeah, but just you know, at the at the we gotta start from somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So if we at the bottom, you have to understand that you not gonna, you might not get paid, but you should take this as you're gonna get paid because when you do get paid, exactly. you're gonna wanna you gonna wanna reap the benefits. Yeah, you got right? y'all both so, gotta hold it down it's, it's like exactly. in that in that sense what you're saying mm -hmm. and what Doc is saying is that because I managed a lot of people before and me and them had a little conversation about this and we agree about this. Managers are not supposed to finance the artists. The artists are supposed to Pay the manager when money started to come in, but in the beginning, the manager shouldn't look for money either. The manager yeah. should just be, like you yeah. said, riding the dive with you because y'all coming from the bottom, y'all building it up. Creating and the month, when money start coming, you you you're the boss at this time. Yeah, you're the right. Boss. So yeah. you get the money, and then you give the manager his 15, 20 percent, and that's how I roll. You know, but a lot of artists, what we saying is that as soon as they get a the manager, they think the manager, I'm hungry, buy yeah. some meat. Uh, I do studio time. Get the studio. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I want to do it, I'm strong because I want to do it. It's cool. That's but nah, that's not the manager. I definitely don't think like that's that. The that's, like, that's the record label. That's the record label. That's the record label. That's the record label. The manager don't do that. Yeah. A lot of people get mixed up in the roles. Yeah, that's so the that's record label. I, you. I definitely don't think like that. Like, I was, like, my pops is, like, one of, like, I, my pops, I love my pops. Like, he's the hustler. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like, he's one of the strongest people I know. Like, my Superman, superhero, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. to this day, I call my pops for everything. No matter what I'm going through. Like, it doesn't matter. I can get a cut right now in my hand and I call him. He always told me don't depend on nobody. So, when I come, I come with my own bag. 
Like, period. Like, yeah. I would never expect for somebody, like, realistically, like, we all trying to make it out, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. We don't have the bag that we gonna get. Right. But I would never expect you to dish out some. But, like, when I'm working now on my project, mm -hmm. we all just chip in to make things happen because, mm -hmm. you know, we want it to all be affordable right, and right. we want to all succeed so we understand that mm -hmm. we have to chip in sometimes we might got to chip in a little bit more than others because mm -hmm. some people don't might not have that's it or yeah. whatever the case may be but we have that understanding so that's a good thing we're working with the violators and verbal wars right mm -hmm. now that mm -hmm. is going on and so so far as far as management since i've been rapping since 2000 and about 14 15 um, they are the only people that really showed me that they was like serious. Mm -hmm. They booking studio sessions and we breaking down our payments, you mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. And they showing up and everything. So I don't expect my manager to ever pay for anything. Like I'm definitely gonna help you mm -hmm. help. I'm a, if not pay for all, I'm definitely gonna put my portion in mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, this is for us. Like mm -hmm. that's how I that's do. real right there. I'm loyal. Mm -hmm. This is for us. Like so if I Start like we we gonna be fin we gonna finish together like that's how it goes. So can we hear a song and see if anybody want to manage you? You know, let us see what type of talent you got. You know, we got Erica Kane from Harlem in the building. You know, and um, she got some dope music. We this want y'all to hear. This is definitely like one of my strongest freestyles. I'm definitely gonna say it's so crazy that people think that it's a song, mm -hmm. but it's a freestyle. Let's go, Erica Kane Harlem. All on the rim, they be searching. Like, is it the man that be flirting? He yelled at my comments, they nervous. So Harlem, but I rap the west side. 43rd with the tech lies. Making movies like I'm Best Buy. Smack the bitch in her left eye. I admit I fell off a bit. She got hard, I lost all of it. Even moved in my mama's crib. Even lost all my confidence. I was down, I was going through it. Even smiled so they barely knew it. Yeah, they knew it, but they couldn't prove it. I had them like, is she ever losing? I was up, but I still was losing. Choose a side, better know what you're choosing. Money come, my Booking cruises. Hey, hello, how are you doing? Sweet for one bitch plus two kids. Shop the sprees, big steak from Rufus. Now they all like how you doing. I seen the vids, I heard the music. I'm not a regular person. Oh, wow. <laughs> Said I be making them nervous. Yeah, I be making them nervous. I'm not a regular person. Said I be making them nervous. Yeah, I be making them nervous. They thought it was over. Till I pulled up in that rover. Dressed in that fashion over. This is a lace bitch, no closure. Pateki all on my wrist now. I can finally give out tits now. Tell them other bitches to sit down. I see they bobbing to my shit now. I'm a bitch that never quits. Wig long and asses thick. Big tits, that's accurate. Fuck you, throw a bitch, I'm the shit. Dream chasing is rapping shit. I ain't playing no cap in it. Big bills, I'm after it. Bank accounts on filthy rich. I'm not a regular person. <laughs> Said I be making them nervous. Yeah, I be making them nervous. Bitch in her left eye. I made up and love a bitch. She ain't got hard to lost all of it. Even moved in my mama's crib. Even lost all my confidence. Mm. Me. Okay. Yeah. Eric yeah. yeah. Kane. Eric Kane is the name. That's hot. Kane, y'all. Y'all know what it is. I see. I see. I see. So, I like that. So, if, can you put in order you had the most fun doing recording performing or interviews the most fun that you enjoy the most definitely be like recording because that's where I'm like the most creative mm -hmm. at like and actually I like this interview because I feel like I'm breaking out of my yeah, skin yeah, yeah, right? there you go there you go so, yeah, but that was um that's a hit record right there thank you I know quality music when I hear it you know, I'm not just trying to make you feel good and all that. But that right there is radio ready. Yeah, and that was yeah. like the craziest thing that's is because ready. it's definitely a freestyle because that's a boogie beat. Mm -hmm. But I felt it so much and yeah. that's my real life on that yeah. mm -hmm. song that I just had to relate to it. It's a lot of good energy in that song. Nah, man. I like the song. You know, I did yeah, have you like, you know, you know, and the way you was rocking it and all that. <laughs> the video, you got to get the video to that. I know. Nah, but see, Working the only thing that. that was, hey, that's, that's like a cover song. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can't do the video. Yeah, yeah. But that's hot though. But it's good though. But um, okay. So you said recording is the first in order. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And then I like the interviews. The show is like the show is always in your face. It's always scary because you don't never know what to expect. Like I just did a show in the Rucker Park for my pops because my pops is from 55th EJ. Um, they call him the mayor. He be doing the Rucker, so he begged me to do the show, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna just do the show. So that was like my first way back into the music this year, besides mm -hmm. the yeah. project that I'm working on. Yeah. You was nervous. I definitely was nervous, but I was like, this is for my pops. Like, I gotta do this. Like, I'm his daughter. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, nah, I gotta do this for my pops. Like, so, like, that's the, besides my daughters, that's the only other person that I just want to please. So, how was your daughters? My daughters is, I can't tell you that. Because <laughs> then I would tell my age, yeah. and that means, like, right, nah, I can't you. tell you that. Yeah. You know, like, I'm my age. <laughs> so, how, so, how you, um, um, Staying relevant with the uh, the quarantine situation we all facing right now. Because I'm just doing? I'm I, like I'm I'm posting you know my clothing I mean my clothing boutique that I'm starting I'm posting that sometimes I post my music mm -hmm. um I just do different things like I I definitely I'm definitely trying to just put myself out there any way possible that I can so mm -hmm. definitely Instagram is how I stay Facebook mm -hmm. just you know with the posts and everything yeah yeah. You know? yeah. So what, I'm going to ask you a question, uh, dream person you could work with, I'm going to hit the male rapper, mm -hmm. male singer, mm -hmm. female rapper, female singer, Honestly, you could pick one of each. Alright, so for the female singer, definitely got to be Beyonce, because like nobody tops Beyonce, period. Female rapper, definitely going to be Nicki Minaj. I like everybody else. But love she period. Okay. Meek Mills is like my favorite rapper period. Like that's it. He at the top of the chain. Like I just Meek Mills. Yeah. And then as far as a singer go, like I would say Chris Brown because he makes good music and yeah. So. So what's your dedication to to the music game? Like, how how much you embedded in this? Well, like, I basically, I'm putting myself on the line because, you know, when you put yourself out there, you, you don't know what you're going to get back. You might get stalkers, you, so much negative energy. So I'm putting myself on the line, so I'm dedicating myself first, and then my music always is going to be second because the safety of myself is going to be jeopardized while I'm doing it. So that's why I'm saying, like, I'm dedicating myself first. Because yeah. once you become... A certain level, there's no more regular life, like you know. Yeah. But as and then my music, like I write my own music, always. Nobody writes for me. I could do it in front of y'all. I write my I write my own music, so you don't have to worry about anybody writing for me. This is all Erica Kane. What you what you hear is what you get, and this is my life. So this ain't no lies. I'm coming with my hundred percent truth. Everything I write about, I've been through. That's it. So what's your goal, Foz? Independent, you like the independent route, or do you want to get a, a deal? Um, my goal is just to secure the bag. So, whichever could give me the bag, that's gonna be my goal. But if it's gonna be deals, it gotta be worth me signing for, and definitely can go independent if I grow a team that's willing to work this way through me, like that. Like, work, see me through this. Like, I definitely will stay independent. So, out of 15 songs that you have, um, how many you think that's like street bangers? Um, street. So I did um, dream chases mm -hmm. or whatever dreams and nightmares. The the that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you really consider Panda Street, but I demolished that beat before. Mm -hmm. Um, free smoke, Casanova. Um, don't run. Mm -hmm. Like terminated that. Like. Any 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 beat that I basically wrote to is like yeah I demolished it. Mm. Mm. Um, I did want to um I, I don't even know the, the I, I can't even tell you right now because mm. my father made me write to it. it's such a strong like man beat is a is a Jay Z beat I can't remember the name right now but it's 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 so it's so hood and it's like and we just worked on um like a even though this is like off topic. 
we just did like an Al Green beat. Me and the uh, and the baby, we mm -hmm. did out. We we wrote to that. Mm -hmm. So. So let me hear, hear something. You all right? You want to hear it with the music or no music? However you want to do it. Um. If you want to do it the music, you put the instrumental on and it just right. bang out to it. Any any cover you want to do. So I told y'all that. I love Nicki Minaj. I love Meek Mills. However, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely gonna go with Nicki right Thanks now. Thanks for Even sharing. I should have done it. Yeah, yeah. Like harder. They're savage. Man. Yeah. But I'm definitely gonna go with Nicki right now because this is like one of my latest freestyles that I just wrote, and I think it's pretty good. So I'm gonna just give it to you raw, basically. You hold all the 43rd out, 43rd, like 40th for the SP, Leroy, everybody. Uh, I need a bag like Coco Chanel. I be counting up these hundreds while smoking the L. Rest in peace to all my haters, I'm wishing them well. They be praying on my downfall, I'm giving them hell. Ten deep when I'm on the block. All my bitches really gang and they all gon' pop. You be talking out your face when they calling the cops. You say you know what the who miss offers to stop. I'm that bitch and I really fight. When your nigga call my phone, I talk to him nice. If he ain't got no fucking money, won't speak to me twice. I be giving him the chills when I suck it with ice. Out of town just to move that work. Pull up in a short skirt, know they all gon' lurk. Yeah, my nigga hit it right when he off the perks. Y'all bitches do it for likes, I do this shit for perks. Blue diamond chain just to match my fucking mood. Vera Wayne, do you have them in the black or new? I like champagne, but I drink this henny like it's juice. Don't run up on me, cause my nigga really like the shoe. Shoe, pull up in the coupe. Last bitch try me and she almost made the news. Damn, I been flying, I ain't never need a student. Fucking with them. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You make Yo. Come okay. That was that was nice. That was nice. Yeah, that was nice. I mean, That's good. That's good. We can do juicy like Biggie like Yeah. Like, let's go, 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 let's, let's go ahead, let's rock. Right. Let's rock. Cuz this is let's like Let's That was hot though. Thank you. That was I definitely like a street banger right there. Yeah, 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 yeah I like that. Oh. Yeah, that was definitely that was nice. Okay. Let's get another song. This song right here basically like just put me back in the days. Like when you was growing when I was growing up as a kid and like life was just so easy, it's complicated. I lost a lot of friends. So I just feel like Biggie is all good, baby, baby. It was all a dream. I used to read Don Diva magazine. Little Kip and Foxy B up on the TV screen. At the stakey way I floors. Every Saturday, fresh to death, I had the sauce. I had you bitches shook every time you saw me. I had the white cup with Henny, I was saucy. And if I pulled up on your block, you was salty. I bet you bitches wouldn't pop if you saw me. Being real was cool, them boys so hard. We had 40 of lit when we played them cars. Pulling up on them block, I stay with the cars. Mustang and 11, BM the Minaj. The Benz is a coupe, the Caddy is large. The next is a jet, just to say I flew the prom. And that's all I'ma give y'all. Just look out for my music that's coming out. like. My project that I'm working on is Kane and Bay Project. Follow me on Instagram, Erica underscore Kane underscore 69. I got a new lingerie um, clothing boutique that I'm starting and it's also going to have clothes too because like I'm a fashionista. It's called Roy U. Kane on Instagram. Follow me. Website coming soon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that thing popping. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Lennox was good. That's like, right, Lennox. Know Lennox yeah. was good. LA, baby. B Jizzle, like, Wolf the God, Leroy, rest in peace. Rest in peace to Geo, like, my 40th niggas, my 39th Street niggas and bitches, my 43rd, like, that's my block. And definitely, I can't leave Polo out because my pops is from there. EBC, rock it up. Y'all need to go holla at them in the summertime, period. Okay, that's okay. It. Right. Y'all yeah, definitely have to go subscribe, hit the, hit the like button, you know what I'm saying? This, this interview is just crazy right now, you know? <laughs> a lot of energy in here. You know? Definitely. We, we, we want to uh, uh, thank you for coming to the show, you know? Thank you for having me. Like, you, I appreciate it. You got a lot of heat. 
You got a lot of energy, and I'm sure you're going to do well. Thank you. I'm sure you're going to do Thank well. Thank you. So can you tell them what podcast show you're on right now? I'm at The Beat 139. That's you can right. check me at The Beat 139. Follow them on Instagram. Follow them on Facebook. Um, Subscribe to their YouTube channel. Right. Like, Remember this interview because when Erica Kane make it, she going to bring the money back too. Like, yeah. Erica Kane, ladies and gentlemen. Erica Kane. Yeah. Yeah.